we are we, we always look for is that ways to to keep the 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 the, the concentration of the drug into uh, the body into the within the, the the therapeutic level so this is one of the things that we we try to 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 find another thing that we always looking for uh, are ways to improve some physical chemical properties such as uh, solubility for example uh, thermal stability uh, mechanical uh, stability for example these are some of the 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 properties that usually we try to to improve uh, there are some ways to doing that we can try, for example, develop methods to deliver the, the, the drug directly into the action site. This might be very inter interesting, for example, when we are uh, dealing with a uh, cancer. So the, in the initial phases, cancer is it's a localized problem. So if we are able, uh, the, the chemotherapy, for example, uh, in the case of chemotherapy, the, the drug uh, is spread all of the body. So that's why the, the side effects are, are too hard in this kind of treatment. But if, if you are able to, to deliver the drug uh, directly to the action site, directly to the region where the, 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 the person or the patient has cancer, it would improve a lot uh, the, the effectiveness of the treatment, for example. Another way, uh, that we, we might try, it's uh, develop manners to, to provide control of drug delivery. So we might be able to keep the, 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 the correct therapeutic uh, level, uh, the, the concentration that's it's within the therapeutic level, the concentration of the drug into the, the organism. Then today I will show you some of the results that I, I, I have in this context, uh, results where I use it, uh, clay minerals to encapsulate on a specific drug, and I use it an approach uh, called co-crystallization that's it's formulate the, the drug in a new solid form. When we are talking about encapsulation, uh, basically uh, what we do is try to find a, a convenient drug carrier. This drug carrier must have or, or should have properties uh, that might prevent the, the drug to, to, to degra degrade, for example, that might help in, the, in, a, in a kind of targeting uh, drug delivery, that might promote controlled uh, release of the drug. There are a lot of studies using polymers, liposomes, micelles, and I, I have used clay particles or uh, clay minerals to, 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 to perform this kind of, of analysis or, or to, to try to, 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 to develop a system that could promote some, some controlled release and protect the, the drug from, from some, some external agents that might oxidate or degrade the, the drug in some, in some way. Clay minerals, when you talk about clay, when I talk about clay, I'm not talking about that uh, material used to, to make uh, ceramics, for example. I'm talking about the smallest component among the soil constituents. So if you, if you analyze a portion of soil, you can find a, a bit of a, a, a percentage of, of gravel, sand, silt, and the smallest of the constituents will be the, the, the clay minerals. Uh, clay minerals are nano-layered materials, are silicates, formed by tetrahedral and octahedral sheets. These sheets might, might have different, different compositions, but uh, they are silicates with some, some, some ions uh, inside. Uh, clay minerals are abundant in the, around the, the earth, you can find different types. The clay minerals are, are classified in different families. We have, fa we have families uh, composed by clay minerals that are formed by one tetrahedral and one octahedral sheet. 
which are called one, one to one, or two to one, which are uh, this kind here, composed by one theta, theta two one octahedral and two tetrahedral sheets. Depending on the decomposition of this, these sheets, the clay mineral might present, or the clay layers might present a negative surface charge. In this case, it's also found together with these clay minerals, cations that equilibrate this charge, that, that compensate this charge. Due to that, uh, the clay layers in this case used to aggregate in, in forming some, some kind of clay some kind of particles, which are like a, a deck of cards, more or less. So clay minerals has a, a high surface area. So uh, if the surface area is, is big, we have so, uh, 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 we might have a lot of reactivity, for example, this is a, a kind of property that might be interesting for, for clay minerals. So there are some application of clay, clay minerals, for example, as uh, to, to, to catalyze some kind of reactions due to the to the to the activity activity or, or the, the the due to, due to the, the high surface area, for example, some clay minerals, especially this two uh, to one clay structure, uh, have the, the 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 capacity of swell. So this, the distance among the layers might be increased or decreased depending on, or, or depending on of some conditions such as uh, humidity, temperature, uh, some kind of, some type of clay minerals uh, do not swell at, at all. Some type of clay minerals do not form this kind of particles. Uh, so there are a lot of different types of clay minerals with some several useful properties. Due to that, clay minerals might be fine being used in, in, in several different, different applications. For example, uh, as a recipient of, of animal food, uh, as ingredients of, of some creams used in the, uh, in treat, in the, in the skin treatment. Uh, clay minerals can absorb some, some kind of half ions, for example, or or positively charged particles or uh, molecules, small molecules. So some clay minerals might be used uh, to combat to combat the the some some ache in the stomach, for example. So there are a, a lot of, of different type of uses to clay minerals. And in in the case of one of of my projects, uh, the idea was try to capture some. Uh, to, to encapsulate uh, the, the, the molecules of drugs, of some pharmaceutical drugs, within the, 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 the interlaced space of clay minerals. Uh, this, this was possible, of course, because uh, all, all, of, all of these properties of, of, of clay minerals. There are a lot of studies uh, considering, uh, concerning the the capacity of, of exchange of this cation and capacity of capture some, some, some small molecules. And based on that study, we proposed the, this type of applic application, a pharmaceutical application for, for clay minerals. Um, I will show you to, I will show to you some results where I have used a specific clay mineral. It's a clay, a, a synthetic one. It's called uh, fluorectorite belongs to a family called smectite. And I use it as a, a drug, ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin is a, an antibiotic. It's widely used, especially in the United States. It's, it was one of the most used uh, antibacterial drug uh, in the wo world in the time that I, 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 I did this research, some like uh, four or five years ago. Ciprofloxacin, it's mainly, mainly taken via oral road, is used for, for uh, combat bacteria in, in the lungs, for example, uh, some infections in the kidneys, and it's highly adsorbed uh, ads, uh, in the organism, in the intestine, so in the low tract intestine. So, uh, Another characteristic of, of this drug is that uh, its molecules are zwitterionic, 
which means that at low pH, the drugs catch on it, or, or it's, uh, the, the molecules are protonated, and at, the high, at high pH, the, the drug is anionic. So the capture, it's, uh, it's simple. Né? We perform the, the drug capture by the encapsulation, I think is more is proper. I say encapsulation here. The encapsulation is performed in a suspension. So basically uh, I made a, a suspension of, of clay, of that specific clay of fluorectoride in uh, uh, deionized water. And I controlled the pH of, of the suspension, especially due to this uh, behavior of the drug uh, of the drug molecules and due to the to the negative uh, charge of, of the clay the, the, the surface clay uh, layers. After some 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 time, uh, the, the the sample is collected, and I have used a lot of, of techniques to, to to try to understand if we if I in fact uh, was successful in, in performing the encapsulation. Of, of this material, uh, of the, the, the drug within the clay layers, and if the materials is, is, is useful. So with X-rays, for example, X-ray diffraction, we can have a direct measurement of the ba basal spacing of the clay particles. So, and, and specifically, uh, a, a specific family of Bragg, Bragg reflections are related to, to this space which are the zero, zero L reflection. So the, the first peak that we see in a, in a diffractogram of a clay mineral usually is the zero, zero, one. So if we follow the, the angular position of this peak, as, uh, if, we, if we look to the angular position of this peak, we can have a, a measurement or we can calculate using Bragg's law the interlayer space, as long as we know the, the thickness of the clay layers. So I did that and I can show, I'm showing to you uh, here some, some, uh, are some results of samples prepared in different pH, pH in an acid, neutral and alkaline pH. And we can see that the zero, zero, 001 reflection shifts to lower angles in uh, neutral and acid pH, which means that the, in these uh, conditions, the, the clay is swelling. The distance between the clay layers is increasing. It's an indicative that, in fact, the, the drug is being intercalated or encapsulated by the clay layers. And it's an unexpected result because the, the, the clay layers are negatively charged and at low pHs, at least, the, the, the drug is uh, protonated. So it's energetically favorable we have this kind of encapsulation. From thermal uh, analysis and, uh, and uh, infrared spectrometry, I was able to, to prove that in fact the, the, the sample contains, you know, the, the, the sample prepared by, uh, by that, that method, They can say that the, the, the clay layers, depending, of course, of the, the, the pH that we are preparing the samples, the clay layers contain the drugs within the, the, the interlayer spacing. And comparing the, the TGA, for example, or, or the, the, the decomposition, the thermal decomposition of the pristine samples together with the, the, the samples that I have prepared, by, by that way that I uh, mixed, mixed uh, clay and, and, and the drug, we can estimate the amount of, of, of drug that the clay is, is able to capture. So I, I did that, this, this, this data are, are published. If you are interested, interested you can take a look uh, in all this, the, the discussion there. Uh, but in principle, I found uh, with the, the, this clay, this is specific, clay that I, I have studied, that I, I could capture at least 25% more uh, ciprofloxacin 
than other compounds reported in the literature at the time that I wrote this 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 manuscript this art, this paper. So the, the second best one was also an esmectite, another clay. You can you can see here this Montmorillonite. It's really similar to this one that I have used. So uh, clay minerals, specifically the, the esmectite, stands as a as important as important materials to to capture. Uh, drugs. It, they, they are at least able to capture drugs. So perhaps we, at this point, we, we can say uh, clay layers might not be useful to perform controlled release, but clay layers might be useful, for example, to, to build filters, uh, perhaps to, to try to clean some, some, some hydric resources, to clean water that's contaminated with some, some, some drug, for example. I did some, some stu studies using ne neutron uh, scattering. Neutron are, are really, uh, really powerful techniques, but neutron scattering techni techniques are really powerful, but are, are, are difficult to, 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 be, to obtain access to, to this kind of, of facilities. So I was lucky that I, I could perform these measurements. And with neutron, I was able to, to, to see or to verify or to evaluate the condition of the drug when uh, intercalated, while the drug is within the, the clay layers. So I, I'm showing here to you uh, the, the generalized mean square displacement as function of temperature. With this kind of measurement, we can, uh, we can see at which temperature the, some, some motion is activated. So if we are close to, to, to zero Kelvin, for example, everything is frozen. As long as we start to increase the temperature, uh, there are some points, there are some temperatures at which some motion, some specific uh, parts of the molecules start to, 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 to move. So we can follow this using uh, this, this kind of approach, this, uh, analyzing the, the mean square displacement. This is a, a, a technique, technique called uh, in elastic, in elastic and neutron scattering using the fixed window, uh, use a fixed window. So uh, if some uh, motion uh, is activated, the, the curve, the, the generalized mean square displacement deviates from a, a straight line, it's a, it's a simpler uh, by waller motion. So we can see here in these in this graphs, the, the pure drug, the pristine drug, and the drug intercalated in, in the generalized mean square displacement of the, the, the pristine drug and the drug intercalated in the, in the same. Oh, oh, uh, here is also the, the, the pristine clay. And here we have the, the pristine drug and the drug intercalated within the clay. So we can see here that, uh, the, the, of course, the, 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 the generalized mean square displacement of, of each one of the, the sample. And this deviation that we have here uh, in the, the clay samples before drying, after drying, is due to the water content. Uh, clay minerals also uh, uh, always have some 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 amounts of water within its layers. They they are they are they really like each other. Clay minerals and, and water. So in the case of of the the drug intercalated uh, within the clay minerals, we see that the 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 curves of the drug intercalated and the pure drug are basically the same. This means that we are not we are not uh, changing uh, the the molecular structure of the drugs, uh, resuming the the results of of, uh, of this 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 technique. So the 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 integrity of the drug is kept when the drugs within the clay layers. I also performed some some uh, release uh, assays using UV. Is spectroscopy to analyze this, the, 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 
releasing profile of the drug. And you can see here, here are the, the releasing. This releasing uh, were performed in different temperatures. Uh, I know that may not be, uh, might not be interesting for the, the application point of view. Analyze the, the releasing in, in lower temperature, like 24 degree or 70 degrees, a, a higher temperature. The most interesting for the application point of view is, of course, the, the 37 degrees. But from the physics point of view, we can find some, some interesting results here doing this kind of analysis. Uh, we can, for example, model this releasing. I tried here to uh, uh, this, this power law to, to model. Uh, of course, that to model perfectly or, or uh, we need to know the mechanism uh, behind this, this, this kind of, uh, of process, this kind of, uh, behind the releasing the, of, uh, of the drug from the, the clay layers. But if, if we don't know that, we need to try some, some kind of, of models based on, on some other information that we have concerning the materials or that we can find in the internet. And the most appropriate, appropriate, appropriate one that I found at the time was this one. It's a semi empirical model uh, derived from the fixed law. From this model, I could find the, the, that the drug, the, the releasing is uh, diffusion controller. So the, the, the releasing is thermally activated. So uh, what else? We can see here, uh, it's a bit better here, that we can, uh, it takes more or less uh, in 37 degrees, more or less 50 hours to be close to the, the highest concentration. So it's a kind of controlled slow release that we can promote using clay minerals as a drug carrier. And the release occurs mostly uh, via uh, cation exchange, uh, which means that the, the, when the drug is within the clay layers, the drug plays the rule of this cation of the cation uh, that uh, compensates the, the the negative charge of, of the layer of the clay layers. Well, some toxicity and effectiveness assays shows to us that the the the, the clay is not changing the, the effectiveness of the the drug. Uh, the, the clay is basically protecting the drug and promoting a uh, controlled release. So it's a, it's a material that can be applied in pharmacy. Another, another, um, another approach that we might try, if the, if the drug, if, if, if we can uh, release the drug in a controlled way, but if the drug does not have a, a good solubility, for example, high solubility, uh, the, the, the concentration of the drug into the organism might be compromised. So we also might look or, or we also must look to some uh, physical chemical properties of the drugs. And we can try to, to increase or to improve some of these properties. One way to do that is trying to find uh, some multi-component solid forms. Just to, to you have an idea, there is a, a, a biopharmaceutical class, classification that classifies uh, drugs into four different classes, depending on, on uh, the drug solubility and permeability. Most parts of the drugs uh, are red market, and the, and the new ones are in class two. The permeability uh, in the, 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 the tissues are really good, are high, but the solubility is low. So to, to, if the solubility is low, there, there's, there is not enough drug available to, 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 to enter in the plasma, for example. So uh, it's interesting, we, 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 deal, we try to improve the solubility, for instance, of some, some of these drug molecules. Um, medical, uh, at least these this, uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients. 
we can find and we can propose a lot of different multi-component uh, uh, solid forms, or we can find uh, APIs in different solid forms. Uh, they might be classified as um, amorphous depending on, on the structure, crystalline. And of course, I'm inter interested in this one, these co-crystals, because co-crystals are, 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 multi, are multi component solid forms that might, might be formed with neutral drugs. So, uh, one of the most used from, from since, uh, since the, the 80s, the 70s, one of the most used approaches is trying to find some salt. But this is only possible if the drug is ionizable. If the drug is neutral, we cannot uh, uh, form a salt with that drug. So one, uh, in, in this case, co-crystals uh, stand as a, a really nice, a really nice alternative because we can form a multi-component solid form with, a neut with neutral drugs. There are different kind of co-crystals and, but in any case, the, the co-crystal is formed due to, to, to some, some non-convalent interactions. Co-crystals, uh, they, they are defined as homogeneous and stable crystalline entities in which uh, the, the interactions are, uh, are given or, or the stability is given uh, to non-convalent interactions like uh, hydrogen bonds, uh, like pi-pi uh, uh, interactions, for example. In the case of, uh, of pharmaceutical crystals, the API is associated with, with some other molecule that uh, it's safe for human or animal use. Usually we look for these components or these conformers in, a, in the generalized, recognized as safe list. And uh, when we are looking for a co-crystal, uh, when, uh, when we are trying to find or to, to build a co-crystal with some kind of, of drug, we need to, 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 to look for a co-former that is compatible with that co-crystal, uh, that might, might form some, uh, that has some pro propensy uh, in, in form hydrogen bonds, uh, that might have some, some synergy, uh, might present some symptom, uh, interaction symptoms with the, the API, for example. So there are, there, are some, uh, there are some steps that we need to follow in order to be able to, to, to find co-crystals of, of certain uh, APIs. Co-crystals, they, they are really promising and, and due to that, mostly because they, we, we can find multi-component solid forms with neutral materials. So this is, it's really nice in the case of, of, of pharmaceutical industry. And then uh, in addition to that, co-crystals co -crystals might help with the, with the, for example, the, the, the permeability of some, some drug molecule with the, with the stability, with the solubility, there are a lot of possible advantages related to, to co-crystal formulations. And the, due to, 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 to this perspective, this promising per perspective, the, the interest in, in pharmaceutical co-crystals is growing a lot. So there are a lot of, of, of groups that, I, that are starting to, to, to study this kind of materials. And another really nice point is that depending on the, the, the synthesis method used, or the, uh, the, 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 the synthesis is really aligned with some of the, with most of the, the chemical, the green chemical principles. So it's environmentally friendly, which is a kind of, with something that we need to, to worry especially when we are uh, dealing with some kind of applied science. So we also need to worry uh, <clears throat> about how, how, how friendly, environmentally friendly, 
are the, the synthesis methodology that we are using. Uh, for instance, meat grinding are, are really, really uh, environmentally friendly. So here I, just to, to as an example, I will show to you some results uh, recently, recent, recently got uh, in a, that I recently got, got uh, in the group that I, I was uh, doing my last uh, postdoc. Uh, we did some, some studies uh, with ciprofloxacin and norfloxacin, which is also an antibiotic agent from the same family than, than ciprofloxacin. Uh, both have, have problems with solubility. And we, we performed some, some studies trying to find co co crystals that could especially improve the, the solubility of ciprofloxacin and norfloxacin. I'll show to you some results of samples obtained through a mechanical chemical synthesis, which means in a ball mill through grinding uh, of uh, ciprofloxacin with nicotinic and isonicotinic acid and norfloxacin with nicotinic acid. One, uh, just a parenthesis, uh, one way that we have uh, tree screening for new solid forms, it's using, uh, it's building uh, binary phase diagrams. We can do that uh, from DSC curves. So we can analyze the, the, the thermal events as function of molar fraction. Depending on the, actually we analyze the, the, the melting, the temperature melting as function of the, the molar fraction. Depending on the melting that we, depending on the profile that we, we analyze, in one side we have the conformer, in the other side of the curve we have the, 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 the drug. As we are mixing the drug in the, conf in the, conformer, in the conformer, they start to interact as we are uh, uh, performing, uh, trying to perform the synthesis of a new solid form. They, they might start to interact and due, due to this interaction, the stability starts to decrease. So that's why we, we might note a decreasing in the temperature, in the melting temperature of the, the mixture that we are building. So uh, analyzing the, the binary phase diagrams, we can identify eutectic mi mixtures, for example. We can ident identify solid solutions. We can identify uh, a physical mixture, for example. And we can uh, identify uh, possible co co crystals. So this is the... Uh, uh, normally, the, the, the binary phase diagram of a co-crystal has this kind of shape. Uh, the, the, in the case of salts, it's similar, it's also similar. Then, then we have, in this case, we have two uh, eutectic points and a, and a peak here of higher stability uh, between these eutectic points. So this is a, a really uh, powerful tool when we are looking for co-crystals. So in the case of norfloxacin with nicotinic acid, we can see here that we have this kind of W shape. So we, we probably, and, and this, this peak here tells us which is the, 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 the best molar ratio to, to obtain the co-crystals. We can see here the, the, the melting, the, the melting event, how the melting event uh, evolves or, or uh, yes, evolves as function of the, the concentration. For different concentration, we have this, this melting point, uh, this melting event uh, going to lower temperature up to, uh, up to, a, to, to, to a minimum, then we go to a higher temperature, which is the, the, the probably the, the crystal, uh, the, 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 the best co-crystal, the, the best molar ratio to obtain the co-crystals, then we have also again the decreasing of the stability of the materials. In this specific case, you can see that the stability of the, the final material, the thermal stability, 
it's uh, higher than the stability of the, the pristine norfloxacin. So, uh, in addition to only from this, 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 this binary phase diagram, in this case, I, I can also, I can already say that we are gaining in this internal stability, for example. Co crystal is, it's, a, it's a crystal, so from the point of view of, of the X ray diffraction, if it's a crystal, means that we have a, a crystalline structure and means that we are able to measure this structure. We have the formation of a new structure and we can see that, but the, uh, the appearing of new reflection peaks in the diffractor, diffractor grams. If we compare, for example, with the pristine materials, this, for example, is, is one that I, I think it's a, a new reflection that I think is, is clear here. This is another one here. Anyway, the reflections are marked here. And we are also able to, to look to, to, the, to, the, to the infrared spectroscopy uh, and see new bands being formed. This, these new bands are, are due to, to the, to the, to the, the non-convalent -con, non new interactions that I formed between the, the drug and the, and the co-former. And in this case, in this specific case, uh, we had a huge increase in the solubility of norfloxacin at a specific pH. It's uh, almost is more than twice higher the solubility here. In this case, we are also able to to, to resolve to solve the the structure of the co crystal that we we obtained it. And this is not all. Uh, it's 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 not uh, it's not always possible because uh, in this kind of, of synthesis we obtain the obtain samples in the in a powder uh, format, which means that it, and, and so a structure by powder diffraction it's really difficult. It's not a, a an easy task. In this case, we are able to. In this next. And final example, we were not able to. So we also were able to obtain some uh, a, a co-crystal of ciprofloxacin with iso isonicotinic acid. Here we can uh, you can see the binary phase diagrams. We have the 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 W shape, is, which is characteristic of a ciprofloxacin or a salt, and we have the formation of a, of a new structure. Analyzing the, in this case, we, the, the, the thermal stability didn't increase, actually decreased a little bit. And in, in, in the case of, uh, of ciprofloxacin, we could get a really huge increase in the solubility uh, in pure water. So uh, this is the solubility of, of cipro by itself and the co-crystal of cipro with nicotinic and isonicotinic acid. It's, it's 10 times higher, at least. And here is, is the solubility in a buffer solution. Uh, in the case of isonicotinic acid, we have uh, uh, almost twice, or basically twice the solubility, which is a, a really nice gain. Well, just to finish some concluding remarks, uh, Encapsulation uh, might be an alternative to prevent some API degradation. We can use clay minerals to do that. Depending on the, the carrier, uh, we can obtain controlled release on the drug. We can obtain a target uh, release of the drug. And uh, of course, clay minerals uh, are really nice to, 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 to be used in this regard because clay minerals are cheap. Are, are easy to find. Well, there are a lot of different types of clay minerals that might be used for this kind of application. Clay minerals are not uh, toxic for uh, oral uh, formulations, for example, so clay minerals might be used. And as physicists, in addition to, 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 to study the, the application in this area, the application of clay minerals, we can find a lot of basic physics. For example, we can analyze the, 
the, the diffusion, the, the molecular interactions of, of the, the molecules with the clay minerals, this might give some, some, some clues uh, to propose, for example, uh, ways to improve uh, the, the soil decontamination, for example. So there are a lot of, of interest, interesting uh, phys physics problems related to this kind of study. Concerning the, the co-crystallization, co we can find some, 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 some really good results concerning the, the increase in the, in, uh, the, the improvement in, in some of the physical chemical properties of, of this, this kind of materials. Uh, what else? The mechanisms are not yet completely understood. One of the, the most uh, accepted up to now uh, explanations for, for this huge increase in the solubility is called the spring parachute effect, uh, which says that uh, initially when the, the, the drug is in contact with the medium, when the, the co-crystal is in contact with, it, with the medium, as the, the co-former is highly soluble, the co-former uh, uh, solubilizes quickly and carries uh, with him the, the drug that's not soluble. But the, the molecules uh, are, are spread in the medium, the, the drug molecules, Due to the due to the due to the conformer, after that the the conformer is already solubilized. The drug starts to 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 aggregate uh, to slowly aggregate with another drug molecules, and this is the the parachute effect effect. Yeah. So we have firstly this this spring effect where the the concentration of of the drug quickly goes to a, to a high level and the, the concentration due to the interaction of the, the drug molecules within the medium, in the, in the, uh, in the solution, for example, the, the concentration starts to decrease, but it's, it is decreasing. It's not quick as the, the increasing of the concentration, which is called a, a parachute effect. However, this is, is not well understood yet. So there are a lot of, of physics uh, or, or science that that need to that, uh, that might be be related to to to, to this phenomenon, and also one really uh, some some good points related to to this kind of approach is that the synthesis is relatively simple, depending on the method. For example, the mechanical mechanical chemical synthesis. Uh, it's aligned with the green chemistry principles and co-crystals are considered new materials. Even uh, when we are using materials that are uh, has a patent, uh, co-crystals are, are new materials. So uh, all the co-crystals, all the new co-crystals are, are patentable. Uh, patentable. So uh, this is a also a plus related to, to this area. I have a, a lot of, of collaborators. Uh, the, the, I have some of, of collaborations related to, to, to these studies, uh, especially Professor Flavio regarding the co-crystals and the new solid forms, Professor Flavio and, and Professor Roosevelt. And uh, the other one is, is more linked to the the, the clay mineral application studies. And of course, I'd like to thank every uh, agency that uh, in some time have uh, give me, gave me some fund, uh, financial funds to, to perform these studies. So uh, thank you also uh, to, to be listening to me. <laughs> and if you have some question, um, I'm here. <laughs> okay, thank you, Alberto. Nice talk. So the the seminar is now open for questions. So if you have if you have any, just open your microphone 
and speak out or type your question on the chat. So I, I will start with some questions. Uh, and um, I have many, but I, I can start asking now and continue doing some of this uh, of soccer, soccer game. Um, okay, the, my question, since I'm not really uh, familiar with the, the area, they may uh, sound a little bit uh, naive. So I apologize for that. So, so when this is kind of general question for me because typically when you have this, is why I understand when you have uh, you need you want a drug delivery, so you need uh, some uh, uh, structure or some uh, device, so to speak, that can uh, capture the drug at some point and deliver it somewhere else some other place and in the body, right? So, in, and my question is, so typically this, the, the, the transport goes through the body or through the blood, right? So the blood takes this uh, uh, device, so to speak, and the, the drug delivery, and then uh, it is delivered some, uh, in some very particular, case, particular place. So the, what is the mechanism that, that triggers the the the, the, the relief because you, you have you have shown one plot that uh, that is delivery versus time I guess but but so is there the environment is important to relieve the the drug in some very particular specific uh, place. Yeah, uh, let me see here. Let me show. Where is it here? Yeah. So yes, the environment is is really important. This 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 releasing studies, for example, for instance, were performed in synthetic uh, gastric acid. So uh, if you change, for example, to 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 an environment that is similar to to, to the intestine, for example, intestine, the, the, the releasing profile uh, will change. Of course, will change. Uh, for sure, will change. Sorry. Uh, in this kind of, of environment, I could see that the release is uh, the, the mechanism behind the releasing was cation exchange. So, which means that the environment uh, must contain. Some, some ion that would replace the, the drug uh, within the clay layers. Otherwise, we would not have the, the, the releasing. So, so the environment is important, plays a really important role to, to have the drug taken or, or to be delivered from this medium. We, have to, we need to have something else that will, will take the dr drug's place. And another... Uh, another approach that sometimes is used, it's such as, as shown in this, uh, in this figure here, sometimes you can have a, a polymer, you can use a polymer as a drug carrier, you can connect this, this, this polymer to, to, to the, uh, the drug to this polymer, you can use some, some methods to do that, and this polymer will also have a, a specific ligand, targeting ligand that can connect, for example, to, to some protein, that can connect to some cell. So if the, with this ligand, the, the polymer will, will, will be fixed in a specific region of the body, then the drug will be released there. So we can have this kind of approach and when you, you can use specifically uh, any specific targeting to, to, to keep the drug in the right site of, of, of action to be released there, or you can use the, the conditions that you already know of some specific site, for example, to release the drug in, in this kind of, of, of uh, re releasing profile, I need to have a specific condition. So 
the drug will only be released in this specific uh, profile if I have this specific condition. So you, you are uh, abs absolutely uh, right. We, uh, the, the releasing will depend of the, the environmental condition uh, where we are, where the, 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 the material is, is, for example. Thank you. So this brings me to a second question. So, so does it mean that the, the drug delivery has to be designed for a specific uh, purpose? It, do, do, can we think of a drug delivery, like a universal drug delivery that can be used for, uh, for, to deliver drugs at different uh, environments, so to speak? Uh, this, this might be really, really tasky, actually. Uh, the, the, the most common uh, thing that I, uh, the most common way is deliver a, 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 a drug delivery system that delivers the drug in a specific condition. So that's the, the most specific way. You can have, for example, in this case of, of, of clay minerals, one possible application that we, uh, we might uh, have, we, if we have, for example, a lot of, uh, if we have different drugs that are not stable at low pHs, that are stable to higher pHs, and we, we need to protect the drug from the action of the pH in the stomach, we can use uh, clay, for example, to protect the drug there because the releasing of the drug there is, is low, then uh, when the, 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 the medicine is passing through the stomach, when the, the clay is passing through the stomach, only a small amount of, of drug will be released there. Then when the, the, the clay releases the in intestine, for example, which uh, with the material keeps for a longer time, the, the drug will be released. Then in this case, we, we can use different types of drugs for different types of application. Though, but the, the most common is when the, 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 the system is developed for a specific time, a specific type of, of, of delivering of a specific condition, for example. And a specific drug too, right? Specific drug too, yeah. Okay. And, and, and question from, from the audience here, the, 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 the seminar is still open for questions. So if you're not, I have uh, maybe the last one. So, Oh, can you comment about the degradation? A degradation is during the, the, the drug delivery or before you introduce the drug delivery into the body? Uh, it depends on the material. Uh, you can have, for example, for example, ascorbic acid or, or uh, vitamin C. If we expose vitamin C to humidity, to, to light, it will degrade in, in some hours. So mm -hmm. it depends on the material. There are materials that, uh, in contact with the, the liquids in the mouth, start to degrade. So we should try to protect. It will depend of, of the specificity of each uh, drug molecule, I would say. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the very, <laughs> maybe naive questions. All right, is there any other question from the audience? If not, I would like to thank uh, Professor Everton once again, and uh, it was very nice to see your talk. And I'm afraid at the beginning of the talk, it was not recorded for some reason. I clicked the button, but it's, I, it didn't go through. And then I, I start later on, but I still good amount of the, your, or your talk is still recorded. Thank you once again. Thank you. Bye. See you all soon next week. Okay.